Here's an example of GFO packing that I've been using. Um, it's a this is a one foot about a one foot piece, which I think will work for most applications. This is a one quarter inch. It's used on um, the Catalina 320, and this is the size according to Jeff Hare, um, who I, I think is pretty trustworthy source. Um, so what what I did six years ago, I put this in my um, regular packing gland and uh, it, it it's you know been really good I'm just gonna uh, crack it's been dripping a little bit this is generally almost a dripless packing so uh, it's been really good so I'm gonna just kind of uh, take you through my impression of what needs to get done um, and then this of course is just gonna be a comment uh, <laughs> ways that you can comment to uh, hope maybe I'll just redo the video uh, based on the comments but um, this is kind of what I've been doing lately uh, as far as my packing adjusting the packing well, um, here's the packing gland um, it's about six years old the shaft log tube here mates with this this hose here so what I've found that I needed to do was back off now this has been dripping a little bit um, it was dripping probably at least once a minute and this GFO packing isn't supposed to drip uh, really at all if it's not spinning if the props not spinning in fact some people um, will plug up this hole right here um, on the Catalina 320s just so they can see how much water is in here or some other people have different strategies please share those with me uh, so um, we what we have to do then is we have to back off this nut and and uh, and create a gap you can kind of see I have a gap in it right there and um, and then what we're free to do is to tighten this nut here this side of it and with this GFO packing what you can't do is you can't um, trying to get the light on this thing so if you spin this is a neutral now if you spin it, it you want it to kind of freely spin okay so my impression is it can be giving a little bit of a torque pressure on this but not too much and of course this wears out and when it spins you might generate a drip but in general I don't generate any drips when uh, at this level of adjustment so what you might want to do is you can back this off until it drips kind of a lot and then you can put it on um, then you go ahead and add tension but the you can't you've got to be able to freely spin the shaft um, so what do I need generally I need to use this PB blaster um, sorry with the light there it's a PB blaster so I soak I soak the PB blaster on this joint for about probably at least 24 hours and then I and then I kind of clean it up and then I follow it with this T9 bow shield um, and then um, that pretty much hopefully will loosen this up so then when you back this nut away this this keeper away from the main nut you're gonna you know hopefully it'll come off okay so the problem is um, when these things are tight this shaft log to this shaft log um, hose kind of is a problem so again you guys all might have a better idea but I got this this wrench here from Harbor Freight so I just stick it on this side okay and I I have it to where I can push down on it pretty good and then I take one of these uh, big um, wrenches that I got from Harbor Freight and then I just put it on the um, I can tighten either one of these nuts with that okay um, if you know then to cinch when you want to cinch it finally oh man this thing's so heavy I use these two I'll use these two uh, wrenches um, one here and then one here on this see the let's see if you get a picture of it so um, that's pretty much it okay so then when you go out on the ocean, um, this is uh, my impression of what Jeff Hare said, not what Jeff Hare said, right? It's my impression. My impression is that 
if you get this too tight it's gonna you could almost put water on this nut and it will psh, blow smoke actually I've gotten into that state before uh, but um, the 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 normal state that it's my impression of the normal state according to Jeff Hare is um, you should just be able to you know kind of touch it and then you know you can't you shouldn't be able to hold it for a long time but this thing is gonna get hot um, and I've been tuning this about once every year and it's been six years and this is just a, it still seems like it's got more to go uh, so um, let, so as far as the PV blaster need to make sure that it you know goes into this joint and the metal parts only here you don't want to be on the rubber part you don't want the rubber part it will disintegrate the rubber okay then uh, what you want to do is just stick these two wrenches in there now and get a picture of it for you a little better so you want to um, you need to make sure that you tighten like this wrench right there but you know leave this one you adjusted this one right to keep it from dripping this nut right here so we need to make sure that we um, you know for the for the main nut we need to make sure let me see if I can get touch it I can't touch it um, so anyway the 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 keeper nut that's the only thing that you tweak you don't you keep this main big nut on this side this wrench in place and and I don't think you need much tension to really lock it down I think they're gonna lock down and if you go crazy with tightening it it's just gonna be a pain in the ass to do so anyway that's my impression of what um, needs to be done I think this is done and then I think I'm gonna just ideally if you could just clean this nut up every so often you know I got so much corrosion on here now um, it's kind of a pain right so um anyway this thing is this thing's got a lot of corrosion so I could clean the shaft and I could probably sand you know sand this nut and kind of get it all cleaned up I think I'm going to do that right now and then of course the shaft log tube you know like say if you're going into the yard um, I think you know make sure that this is in pretty decent shape because it does it does get a little stress on it obviously I've stressed it look at this positioning on the thing so uh, anyway I have the okay, uh, sea trialing at uh, 2200 rpm again don't do this uh, you could get hit by the shaft it's kind of dangerous but touching it and it's cool to the it's cool to the touch could be a little hot this. If anything, I think it's spraying a little bit. So you can kind of see some water coming off the shaft there. Um, so I think I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more. Uh, and again, it's, it's not hot at all. It's not warm at all. It's, it's not cold, but you know, it's, not, it's not warm. I could probably take that up a little bit because um, I don't want it to drip that much. You know, it's spraying over here. Not a good situation. Do another tune-up for uh, the packing bolt. Um, this is for GFO packing, by the way. It's only for GFO packing. So what I'm going to do is move this keeper nut toward the muffler here. And back it off just enough um, to give me a little space to tighten down this nut a little bit, the uh, outside nut where the wrench is on. So um, that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to test it again for friction on the drive shaft. So I was out powering around and um, I got a little bit, you can kind of see, I got a little bit of water there. And it was drifting, dripping from the shaft, the shaft area over here. And then you can kind of see the telltale signs over there of kind of the, the shaft spitting off water on the muffler, which isn't good. I've got the motor on now. It's kind of interesting. Uh, the, the 
shaft turns really easy with the uh, the motor on. Just like there's no resistance at all. I'm getting a lot of drip right here, so I'm gonna have to get it a lot tighter. So I think um, this probably is a learning experience that I'm gonna have to go through. Probably just need a little tighter. It's crazy how how much tighter it is when I'm when the motor's off. Like it's way tighter. Um, so we're just gonna have to just wrench down on it a little bit and then I'll turn the motor on again probably so, uh, I tightened it up a bunch now with, you know on, on idle and it's it's got a fair amount of you can kind of see here that this is flexing just a little but not very much um, I think that might be the sweet spot I'm gonna throw it in here now and put it this low low speed idle and see what happens. This is all dry. The shaft is, I think, fairly, fairly dry. There's might be just a little bit of water in it, but I think the shaft is pretty dry. I'm going to spin it and see what happens. Here now. Again, you don't want to be getting your hand in this uh, in the dry area. It's a really dangerous area. And there's the uh, shifter too. So if you accidentally hit that shifter, your hand was in there, it'd be terrible. So um, you don't want to, you know, you sort of need to observe it, but, or you could, the safest thing would be just to put a paper towel down there and probably just look for water drips uh, once you drive it all out. That's probably the safest. Um, but anyway, I'm not an expert and uh, probably uh, I should have a mechanic do it if you're. Uh, think that uh, <laughs> you're going to have a risk of uh, injuring it. So I turned the engine on, uh, put it here, and uh, I, touched, I touched this nut. You still have a little bit of water dripping, about one drip every couple of minutes, uh, maybe three minutes. Uh, so it's pretty much dripless right now, and, but it is low RPM. Uh, there's a lot of vibration here. I don't recommend you get your hand anywhere near this. Uh, there's a rotating part there. You can actually put it in here over there. But this is a lot of uh, danger. Because, uh, so you really don't want to be inside this cavity uh, without having it in uh, item. Uh, uh, so um, we do see just a little bit of water on this part of the shaft. Um, and it was, I could grip this nut right now at this RPM, um, it's not too hot to uh, touch, which uh, just a little bit hot to touch according to Jeff uh, here. So anyway, uh, looks like it's adjusted. Feel free to give me all your comments. Um, I've been wrong a lot before, so I'm depending on the comments to kind of tune my uh, video. This is more of a kind of a sounding board of what I've done in the past, and uh, you all might have a better ideas. So um, uh, good luck on your uh, good luck with your boat and uh, tuning your uh, your dripless. Uh, this is again a pretty much a semi dripless system that doesn't accumulate any um, water if you do it right.